Hey, so I'm excited to tell you about our 24 hour challenge and there are going to be five winners. That's right. Five winners are going to receive the Think in English package and I want you to be one of the five winners. So you must stay until the very end so that you can understand fully what the challenge is and how you can win. All right. I'm teacher Tiffany. Let's jump right in. All right, so the 24 hour challenge has five steps. Step one, pick. Step two, find. Step three, divide. Step four, define. And step five, use. So step number one, you're going to pick one word that you already know. The goal of this step is for you to find a word that you already can use comfortably in conversation. So let me show you some examples. Happy, English learning. Now you see that these are words that you already know. Very simple words. That's how you start. Step number one, pick a word you already know. Now step number two for this 24 hour challenge is find. You're going to find one word for each letter. Remember that they need to be words you don't already know. Now I'm going to explain this to you again. You basically have to find a word for each letter, but the words you find, they can't be words you already know. So let's look at the words that I chose in step one. Happy. Here we go. H hyper a analogy P pedantic. Now let me pause really quickly because you may be saying to yourself, Whoa, teacher Tiff, I don't know what pedantic means. Don't you worry. All right. So after me, pedantic, good, pedantic, excellent. Now the next P is peruse, peruse. Another one really quickly. Watch my mouth. Peruse. Excellent. Again, peruse. Good job. Now for the last letter, I can say yield. Now what if my word is English? So I can say for the letter E, endeavor, the letter N negate really quickly. Pronunciation practice negate. Ooh, good job. Negate. Excellent. Remember all we're doing for this step so far is finding words for each letter. All right. Now after negate, I've chosen gouge. All right. Next livid. Ooh, real quick. That's a tricky one after me. You ready? livid. Good job. Last time livid. Excellent job. All right. So we have livid. Then we have ingenious, saturate and horrendous. Well, what about learning? Again, you're only choosing one word, but I'm just showing you three different examples. So if I chose learning, my words would be lavish, edible, arduous. Woo. Let's do that together. Arduous. Great. Again, arduous. Excellent. Very good. So then I have repetitive next novice next indecent next notable and finally galore. So again, for step two, the find step, we found a word for each letter of the easy word that we had right now. What happens in step three for this 24 hour challenge? Now what we have to do is divide. You're going to divide your day based on the number of words you have. So here we go. Let me show you how this looks. So we have happy English and learning. So my day starts at 4 a.m. It's true. <laughs> I am an early bird. So you have to look at your day. All right. Step three is divide. So look at the time you wake up and the time you normally go to sleep and you're going to count the number of hours. So for me, I wake up at 4 a.m. and go to bed at 9 p.m. So that's 17 hours. So if I chose happy, happy is five letters. So 17 hours divided by five is approximately 3.4. 
So what's going to happen is I'm going to break up my day now into certain blocks. And those blocks are going to be about three and a half hours. Here we go. Three and a half hours long. So you'll see right here, 4 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. 7.30, sorry, 7.30 a.m. Then 7.30 a.m. to 11 a.m. And I continue all the way down until I get to 9 p.m. Now we're going to do the same thing for the word English and the word learning. Again, just showing you examples. You're only going to choose one word, but I want to show you three examples. So what if I chose English? Well, English is seven letters. So now that 17 hour period will be divided by seven, as you can see here on the screen and learning is eight letters. So my day of 17 hours will be divided by eight. So you see what's happening now again you are going to do the same thing. Now here's what happens. The reason why we're dividing our day is because you are going to have one word for each block of time. Whoa. I love this challenge. All right. So here we go for happy from 4 AM to 7 30 AM. I'm only focusing on hyper 7 30 to 11, only focusing on analogy 11 to 2 30, only focusing on pedantic. And the same is true for the other time slots. This is what you're going to do. So again, step three is very important. You're going to do a little bit of math. You're going to break your day down and then apply the words to each block. Now, step four is very important. Here we go. Step number four is define. So you're going to learn the various meanings of each word. Now, what I did for this one is I decided to only look at one of the examples because I didn't want you sitting here listening to so many definitions, but I chose the word learning. Now remember learning has how many letters? Good job. You remembered eight letters and I divided my day up into eight separate blocks and each block has a word. So for step four, now I have to define the word and learn the meaning. So here we go. Lavish. The first one, it means using or giving in great amounts large in quantity and expensive or impressive, very lavish. Mm -hmm. Stay with me. We're going to get to it, how we're going to use it. Right? So for the first block, I'm only focused on the word lavish. And now I know the meaning. Now, what about the second one? Edible. What does edible mean? Suitable or safe for eating. So for example, an apple is suitable for eating, right? So I can say an apple is edible, right? You got it, right? However, a book or a phone, no, that's not safe for eating. So it's not edible. They aren't edible. Makes sense, right? Okay, good. Now from eight to 10 AM, the word I have is arduous and that means difficult or needing a lot of effort and energy. So an arduous task, think of something very difficult and hard to do an arduous task. Again, that word is going to be my focus from 8 AM to 10 AM. Again, this is my example, right? Just helping you see how to do it now from 10 AM to 12 PM repetitive. That means containing or characterized by repetition, especially when unnecessary or tiresome, something that's done over and over and over again, right? Okay. Now let's move on to the next time period. Again, remember they're going to be five winners. So hang in there. You know, you're about to do it. I know you can win. So 12 to 2 PM novice, a person new to, or inexperienced in a field or situation. So when I first became an English teacher, I was a novice. Why? Because my initial, my first career was in web development. I had never taught English before. I was a novice. Make sense. All right, good. Now, when I get to the two o'clock time period, the word that I have to look at is indecent, which means not appropriate or fitting, not conforming with generally accepted standards of behavior. So for example, normally when you go outside, you wear clothes, right? But if someone walks outside and has no clothes on, you can say, Ooh, that's a little bit indecent. That's not proper. That's not acceptable. Make sense. Good. Now we're moving to the 4 PM time period and I've chosen the word notable, but what does notable mean? 
worthy of attention or notice, remarkable, prominent, or important. Think about your favorite singer. Woo! When they grab the mic and they start singing, called to belong to Jesus. You can say, ooh, that's a notable singer. Remarkable, prominent, important. Do you like my song? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, when I get toward the end of my day, after I chose learning to be my word, the last letter of learning is G and the word I selected was galore. So galore means in great numbers or in abundance. So large amounts, we say galore, there's candy galore there, right? Lots of candy. So this is step four, but what about step four? Number five, here's where it gets interesting. The use step. You need to use the words throughout the day. In other words, use them to describe different things about your day. So here we go again, my word is learning. I have my eight time slots, right? Then I have these images. Now these images are showing you what I do throughout the day during specific time slots. What's going to happen is the word that I have placed for that time slot. Now I need to use that word to describe what I'm doing. That's what you're going to do as well. During this 24 hour challenge, you need to describe what's happening during that time slot using the word. So for example, from 4 AM to 6 AM, you see, I have food there. We have lavish. Then we have edible, arduous, repetitive, all of these words, but Let's look at them in more detail. Here we go. So from 4 a.m. to 6 a.m., I usually cook breakfast. So I can say, I decided to make a lavish breakfast for my family this morning. Uh -huh. you, you see, right? A lavish, extravagant, amazing breakfast. I used the word lavish during that first time block to describe what I do during that time period. Now, here we go. Next, 6 a.m. to 8 a.m., the word is edible. I can say, ooh, the apples were not edible, so I used strawberries instead. Again, during that time period, I'm still preparing breakfast, and I recognized, shoot, the apples are bad. We can't eat them. They're not edible. So I described the situation using the word edible. Makes sense, right? Now, what about the next time period, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m.? Responding to all the emails was a very arduous task. Now, this is something I actually do. Around this time, I check emails from you all and I respond to them. And sometimes it's a very difficult task because there are so many emails. So I can say it's a very arduous task. Makes sense, right? Now I'll never forget that word because I applied it to an action that I actually did. The same is true for you. Now what about the 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. time period? Recording podcasts. I can say recording the same podcast intro over and over again was a repetitive task. Over and over and over again saying the same thing, a very repetitive task. Makes sense, right? Good job. Now, what about 12 p.m. to 2 p.m.? Here we go. I used to be a novice video editor, but now I am an expert. And that's true. I edit videos around that time. And in the past, I was a beginner. I didn't really know how to edit, but now I'm quite good at it. I'm not a novice anymore. Makes sense? All right, now what about 2 p.m.? Again, the word that I have for 2 p.m. is indecent. So I can say that comment under the YouTube video was very indecent. Again, you're seeing how I'm applying the word to what happened during that time period. What about 4 p.m. to 6 p.m.? I decided to purchase a notable business book from the bookstore down the street. Now this actually happened. I'll show you. I bought this book around that time. This is a business book, right? So. I can say I decided to purchase a notable. This is a very popular, if you're into business, this is a great book, right? A very popular business book, all right? Here we go, next, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. My friend's freezer had ice cream galore. 
lots and lots of ice cream. Now I'm vegan, but I eat vegan ice cream made with soy milk or almond milk. So there was ice cream galore in the freezer. So you see now with this 24 hour challenge, you'll be able to learn so many words and also learn how to use them properly as you follow this 24 hour challenge. Now, again, I said they're gonna be five winners. So here's the deal, if you want to win, here's what you need to do. In order to win, you need to pick a word, just like he said in step number one, pick a word. What you're gonna do is find a word for each letter. Remember, we talked about this. If the word is happy, find a word for each of the letters. Then what you need to do in order to win is you need to write the word and the extra words in the comment section and I will announce the winner in 24 hours. They're gonna be five winners. Now, the Think in English package is what you need and it's a complement to this challenge because this package will teach you how to make sentences properly in English, how to organize your thoughts and how to finally think in English. So all of these words you'll be learning, now you'll also be able to learn how to make the sentence properly using the Think in English package. So again, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Participate, all you have to do again is pick a word, find a word for each letter, and then write the word and the extra words in the comment section. And in 24 hours, I will select a winner to get the Think in English package. Now I'm excited. I can't wait to see all of your words in the comment section. And I am looking forward to picking five lucky winners. All right, let's jump right in. I'll see you guys next time. I hope you have an amazing day. Remember to speak English. You still there? You know what time it is. It's story time. Hey, I said it's story time. <laughs> All right. So today's story time, guys, is honestly about a challenge that I had to face. So challenges are amazing. Again, we talked about our 24-hour challenge for today. But when I was in grad school in South Korea, I had to write my thesis completely in Korean. Now that was already a challenge in and of itself. Very difficult, very challenging. And I spent months and hours working on my thesis. Now in order to get your thesis approved, you have to go through kind of this, mm, this approval phase with your professors. And it's not easy. So I remember going into my first meeting with the professors. It was a little bit nerve wracking, very nervous. So I walked into the room. There were about five professors sitting at some tables and about maybe four or five of us uh, students who were trying to get our theses uh, approved. So it was my turn. They called me up and I sat down at this. Uh, it, was, it wasn't even a desk. It was just a small chair. And I was looking at all of the professors. It was very intimidating. So one of the professors opened up my <laughs> my thesis. They had already read through it. And for the next 20 minutes, he proceeded to totally tear my thesis apart. I mean, he said, Tiffany, does this make sense? I don't understand why you wrote this. Does, I mean, it was horrible to the point I was like, wow, okay. Like it was bad. Even my, my classmates were like, ooh, kind of looking down. It was really bad. At the end he said, you're gonna have to start over. <laughs> I said, Okay, now again, I was very polite, very respectful. I was like, thank you so much, sir. Yes, sir. It was so bad though. When he finished and all the professors walked out, my professor that was the one helping with writing the thesis, she said, are you okay, Tiff? I said, I'm, I'm okay. Um, I just realized that I have to start over um, and that's a little bit aggressive. And she said, she said, Tiff, I know it's aggressive. I know it's difficult. And it was all happening in Korean. She said, but I think if you were up to the challenge, your thesis will really turn out a lot better than it is right now. So I went home to my apartment and I thought about it and I was like, man, at that point in time, I was like, why, why am I doing this? Why am I going through all of this stress? Because I was working at the same time, living in South Korea, away from my family, and the thesis that I had spent months on was just totally torn apart. And I had to start from square one. So I said, you know what, I have two choices. Either I can quit and say, you know what, I don't need this. I can go back home, I'm fine, I can find a job, I don't need to stress about this. Or I can accept the challenge and try to make my thesis better. 
So I contacted my professor the, ne the next day and I told her, I said, you know what? I, I do want to try to make the thesis better. So for the next several weeks, she and I met on a regular basis and she told me, Tiff, you need to change this. You need to update this. And she told me all of the things I had to do. Remember, I was working a full-time job at that point in time and I had to write this thesis. So for the next several months, I think it was about two months, excuse me, I had to write a lot. I had to do lots of research, but I had accepted the challenge because I said, you know what? The other professor that tore my thesis apart, he was just trying to make me better. He knew that it would be very challenging for me to have to go back and edit everything, but he also knew that I could do better. So I went through the next two months. I would go to work, come home, take a nap and start writing, researching all the time. And I even had some friends helping me. And at the end of the two months, I had the next meeting with the professors. I was a little nervous because again, the first time I went, he tore my thesis apart. So I had finally got the second, the revision done. I started over and I walked into the meeting with the professors and they were sitting there and I was prepared. I was prepared to really just get a lot of complaints, uh, a lot of things that needed to be changed. So I sat down and they all, you know, they looked at me and I was like, is this a movie? <laughs> They, they were all quiet, sat down and I was like, do I start speaking Do they? Cause normally they speak first. So they looked at me and then the one professor that had tore my, tore my thesis apart. He opened it. He looked at me and he said, Tiffany, good job. I, I, said, what? What? <laughs> I didn't say that. And I was just like, comes on means thank you. And they proceeded to tell me the things that they recognized were updated the things that were better, easier to understand. They made a few comments that things that like, Hey, this could have been a little bit clearer, but overall was very clear. And they said, this is a really good thesis. So I realized in that moment that if I hadn't accepted the challenge, even though it was difficult and it wasn't easy and it required a lot of work on my part, I would have never become a better writer. I would have never become the individual I am today. I'm able to explain myself better and to make difficult concepts simple. And I really appreciate that professor for pushing me harder and for giving me that challenge. So I hope this is encouraging for you. This 24 hour challenge is going to help you so much. And I want you to participate and I want you to find a word and then find the extra words and put them in the comment section so that you can not only improve your English, but also get an opportunity to win the prize. So again, remember guys in the comment section, you need to put your words and then you'll have an opportunity to win the think in English package. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed story time guys. I will talk to you later. Have an amazing week. Bye-bye.